Hey everyone, it's Vintage Vinny, and welcome to Shopping with the Old Curiosity Shop Hall Part 3. I took him into Pennsylvania, and we went to two of my favorite indoor flea markets. Let's check out what I got. We both didn't find a whole lot of things at the two places I took them. Uh, we still found some stuff, don't get me wrong, and sometimes less is more. But they just seemed a little... They like, they lacked a little bit in some of the things we both look for. But that's totally alright, because, like I just said, sometimes less is more. So let's go ahead and check it out. This is everything I got at the first place. This was actually on a free shelf. It's Venice Perfume by Yves Rocher. It's only 0.5 fluid ounces. Uh, that is listed on eBay if you happen to be interested in it. I loved these two books, and I pilfered through them real quick and thought they were really interesting. This one is from 1964. It's Betty Crocker's Parties for Children book. It's got recipes and game ideas. I just loved the graphics on here. Again, from the early to mid-60s. Just couldn't leave that behind. Let me take a look in here real quick. Just the fun images. I just, I couldn't resist them. And it's in good shape. Overall, that's what made me buy it. This book is from 2001, so it's not terribly old, but you know, it's over 20 years old now. This is Behind the Scenes of Tiffany Glass Making, the Nash Notebook, including Tiffany Favreau Glass by Leslie Hayden Nash, Martin Eidelberg and Nancy McClelland in association with Christie's Fine Art Auctioneers. This book are once retailed, oops, sorry, retailed for $50. And there's just all kinds of like pictures of and such in here. Just really neat stuff. So I thought that that was a good pick up and the price was right. So that's why I bought it. I did manage to get some glass pieces at really good prices. This is really nice. This is an almond colored, I guess it's a stretched vase. I want to say it's made by Westmoreland, but I could be very wrong because I know Fenton also had an almond colored glass line as well. But the price was really decent on that, so I went ahead and picked that up. I really liked this Amberina candy dish or just footed dish of some sort. I'm getting Ellie Smith vibes from it, but I could be wrong. It could be a Viking piece as well. I have to do a little bit more research because I know that sometimes the molds are a little bit similar, but there are different distinguishes or different looks to the glass made by certain companies. So I may, that may require a little bit more research, but still that was a really nice piece and it does have cadmium in it and it does fluoresce under a black light. Anytime I can find these 7-Up uh, bottles with the Bubble Girl on them, I do like to pick them up if they're inexpensive enough. This one does have some wear to it, but I know that that will probably sell at an industrial sale for a decent price. And the last piece of glass that I got from this indoor flea is an Anchor Hawking Manhattan compote. I first thought it was a martini glass, but um, after doing a little bit more research and asking Scott about it, these are just footed compotes. And it's got a nice ribbed texture. I have two other ones, but I need to... I want to get a set of four of them because I think they'll sell better in a set of four rather than a set of three. And the last two things that I picked up at the first place we visited are these salt and pepper shaker sets and this really cool rusty crusty rooster dust pan. I would probably hang that up on a wall. I almost want to say that it's probably from a child's set, like, you know, child's like toy set. Love that. Rusty crusty and fun. These very much scream Carol Brady to me. These, this bright green then yellow salt and pepper shaker set. There isn't a maker on either of them to say who made them, but I just loved that 
green and that yellow combo. Personally, that's the kind of 70s green that I like. It's not avocado, but it's almost like a lime green. That's what I'm that's my favorite green of the 70s. So, those I just couldn't leave behind. Alrighty, and the next place that we went to, I think I actually wound up spending over $60. And this is what I got. But I did save the best for last, so stay tuned. I really liked the look of this dish here, this like little smoked glass dish for Robert Shaw Thermostat Division uh, from the Federal Credit Union. Very, very cool. I can see this being propped up in a plate stand and just a, you know, make a great display for advertising and that industrial vibe. I just loved the colors of that. It's just, it's so neat. This is hilarious. And when I saw it, I had to have it. It's just one of those creamers that you see. It's a sterling one made here in the U.S. I think it's made in the United States. Yeah, in Ohio. I bought it because it said bimbo on it. So now I got me a bimbo creamer. I did find a set of these uh, salt and pepper shakers, cast aluminum. I think they're cast aluminum. Maybe they're just a metal. Do need a little bit of cleaning up, but those will be up for grabs at an industrial sale. So I couldn't leave those. I loved the lettering on this stamp pad box. Absolutely awesome. It does not give a year. I can open it up. Yep, you can open it up. Tell it's very worn. I don't know if I can even get this out. I think I can. That might be best if I remove that, but just look at how cool that box is. Could not leave that behind. I did find this Alka Seltzer tube. I loved the lid on it. That would just be cool to display in a bathroom. So I had to pick that up. And don't forget, guys, Katie Vintage and Vinyl I do an industrial sale every month. We haven't decided when we're doing one for this month of April just yet, but it will happen. I loved the look of this planter here. I think it's, it is redware pottery. Free of any cracks or chips, I think. Yeah, I don't hear any cracks or chips. We'll need a little bit of a clean-in. But I loved that. I found a sparkling mint puffs tin. I don't think there is a year on it, but it is still a really cool piece. That minty green color is fantastic. This would make a great riser. Like if you wanted to display maybe some jadeite salt and pepper shakers on top of here in your kitchen, that would make such a really cool item to add to your kitchen vignette. I did spot a McKee pepper shaker. I don't remember if the one that I have now is pepper or if it's salt. I'm crossing my fingers that it's salt because I have the beehive ribbed ones by Jeanette. I think they're Jeanette. And I know I have another one of these that I found and I think it was salt. I'm like I said, I'm crossing my fingers that it's salt. Couldn't believe it was only five bucks. That was a really good price for that. Usually in antique malls, people try to charge over forty, fifty, sixty dollars for just one of these. I'm sure you all can see this giant amethyst trophy vase. It does need some cleaning, but I have a really nice glass cleaner that will shine this beauty up brightly. Free of any cracks or chips. Love, love, loved that. And yes, I did pick up another Avon bottle. This is the seahorse, the giant one. I found a little baby not that long ago, and I actually have two of these already. So anytime I can find these, because you don't see the seahorses too often. It doesn't make them valuable or anything, but you, they're just harder to come by, like the mermaid. I see a lot of the other ones from like the, you know, like the fun, colorful ones, like the teapot or the coffee carafe and things like that. But I don't usually see the seahorses that often. So I picked that up. I did find a 19, oops, I'm sorry, 1946 
moth hanger piece. And I loved that shade of green, copyright 1946. You could put this out at springtime, have it well into summer. You could use it in Halloween because of that nice, like, bright green color. It would look good with black and orange. And then I found this piece. Now, she would have had a man with her. It's just a ballerina piece of chalkware. Still has the hanger on it. I just loved her. Again, I'm going to clean her up. I'll probably hold on to her for a little while. Maybe I'll find the mate. Who knows? It does have some slight chips, but that adds character to it, to me. So I couldn't leave that behind. So, like I said, folks, I did save the best for last. So let me show you what I found. I couldn't believe it. All right, these were my last four items I'd like to share with you all. I got some vintage Halloween, you guys. I don't see it that often for the prices that I paid. Well, this is this one's not Halloween, but this one just has got a really dainty, beautiful lady on it. But this was the vast majority of what I spent. Everything else was pretty much really reasonable. I think I spent, I think it was like maybe just a little over $60 with tax, but this was 45 of it. So everything else I got for really good prices. This one, look at the devils on the tambourine. I think this was made by Kirchhoff. I think, but look at that. Oh my gosh. How stinking cool. And just for itches and giggles, I decided to uh, look this up to see what it was going for. And the last one of these tambourines with the devils on it sold for over $100. So if I need to ever sell this, I know I can get my money or make some money on it. These are really cool, too. These are clickers. They, I think, were made by the same mold as the frogs because you can see the frog mold or the frog eyes right there in the frog shape. Made by the T, maybe these are T. Cohen ink. Yeah, as you can see, these were $10 a piece, but when you don't see vintage Halloween that much, and that's, this was a pretty reasonable price for these. And they do work. They're gonna be a little loud, so I apologize. But yep, they work. <laughs> and then this one, like I said, has a little dainty lady on it. I have a larger version of this, but I, I liked having the small one. Aren't those so stinking cool? This devil one is absolutely amazing. I was so tickled pink to get all of these. So that's everything I got in PA. And since we had a little bit more time to kill, I took Scott to some of the, or two of the local antique malls that we have here. So let me go ahead and show that stuff to you all. So at the very first antique mall that we went to that's local here, I only spent $9.54. And this is what I got. I found a calendar ink blotter. That's totally out of focus. He had some other ones, and they were all framed up, and he wanted like 60-something, which is kind of a lot to spend all at once. But I love it. It is an ink blotter. But I like to collect these if they're inexpensive enough. I also found this little pitcher here, and it's got stars in it. There, that's probably a little bit better. Unfortunately, it does have a chip here, but I didn't mind it. I was going to put this in my junk jar because I don't think the average person would buy this with this kind of damage. So to the junk jar it goes so it has a forever home. Now, clown alert. I did find this adorable child's hanky, circus-themed, with the elephants and the clowns and the cat seal and the bear and the bunny. I just thought this was really, really adorable. So I had to pick that up. And those were the only three things I got at that one store. Alrighty, and the last place that we visited, which is literally within walking distance of the other mall, I spent a grand total of $50.19, and it doesn't look like a lot. I did pay up for a few things, actually for one thing, and that's what made it a little bit more expensive. This is a really interesting hand-blown bowl here. 
It is signed. It's got a pontil. It looks like it says Shelton Jr. Your Jr. Shelton. But that's the only mark that's on it. It's a very interesting piece. It does have some bubbles in it. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it or not. But I got that 5%. Oh no, I think I got it 15% off. So that's really cool. I love this pottery elephant. I got this 5% off. A lot of the booths here will do 10% off if they're running a sale if you're paying cash and 5% if you pay card. So I took a little discount. And through my research, I found out that this is made by Denby Pottery. So it's English. But I love him. I didn't see any sold. I think maybe I did see some sold, but I can't remember exactly off the top of my head what they go for. But it was worth me picking up. This is a really cool piece. This is for a local piano company. I don't know if they're still there or not. I haven't done any research. But it's one of the plaques that go on to the piano. And look at the phone number on here. And there's no zip codes. That means this is before 1963. Andy Hamilton. And then this is where it was located in Hagerstown. And look at that phone number. You, this is definitely older. So I just thought that was really neat, and I only paid a couple dollars for it. So that was really cool. The last piece is my favorite find from this antique mall. I can't wait to show it to you. And it is this awesome Rubens Lady Head Vase that looks like Marilyn Monroe. Now what's interesting is, I looked in my head vase book that I have, and the one that is in that book just sold for over like three thousand dollars now this one of course is not that one but i've seen other alleged reproductions on um, ebay but none of them have the cursive r with i guess that's like a, a, a inventory number or something on it even one of them is listed um with a nippon stamp which that's definitely repro because nippon was like the 1920s and further back. So this one stumped me a little bit. Now I will say I did pay $23.75 for her. It was on sale from $25. And I felt that that was a really reasonable price because I've kind of been wanting a Marilyn Monroe head vase. So it, like I said, it may require a little bit more research, but I just, something about it tells me that, that this, that this, that this that this isn't one of the reproduction ones because of that embossed R on the bottom. But I'm sure one of you all will let me know down below in the comment section what your thoughts are on it. So that is everything that I got the last day that Scott was here. Let me know down below in the comment section what were your favorite items from this haul.